transformational life coach uh, and healing and aging coach as well. Um, I've been doing this work with women and of course men, children also, but I have a certain passion for women for obvious reasons. <laughs> and with women, when Krista said, okay, this is the subject, moms. Now, I am a veteran mom. My 30-year-old daughter is right there. <laughs> and I also have a 24-year-old daughter. And I'll say, normally we travel in threes, but as you young moms, now this is the thing. My daughters and I still, they still want to hang with me. They still want to spend time. We went to go see Beyonce. We saw Eternal one day. We went to, we've gone so many different um, places and we still hang together. And I know when you're just starting off as a mom or you're coming into your groove as a mom, you want to be able to be your child's friend as well as parent, and you're trying to find that happy balance in doing both, right? So this is the thing. As I speak, I spoke at an event yesterday as well. This is my thing. I, want, I don't want to be the fish in the fishbowl up here. I want interaction. So my thing is when I say yes, I want you to say, oh yes, let's try it out. Yes. Oh yes. 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 Oh yes. yes. Okay. So when you hear me randomly say yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. Awesome. Awesome. So it's so interesting. I have my notes, but I, I just like to, to speak from the heart as well. And I want to talk about being a woman first. I heard someone in the panel talk about, so are we supposed to just lose our hopes and dreams when we become a mom and that's the only thing that we do? The answer is no. But going back, most want to be the friend, the parent, trying to have, me, have a happy balance. I want my children to like me. I want them to respect me. I want them to think I'm cool. Yes? Oh, yes. Yes? Oh, yes. And Contrary to what some people say, you can still be your child's friend because a friend is a confidant, a friend is someone that you trust, a friend is someone that you would like to spend time with. So a lot of times people say, well, you can't be your child's friend. You can be your friend. But even my 30-year-old daughter knows that I'm still the mama. <laughs> and that's how it is. It's so interesting because when it comes to parenting, I think about 1993 when I had her, right? I was a young mom. I was, I'm in my 50s now. Um, come on, hello. <laughs> <laughs> any 50 and overs or am I the only oldest one in here? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but it's so interesting, the dichotomy and dynamic of parenting. When I was a young mom, I was in my 20s, I got married early, and I became a mom. And that was before the internet. Before you can say, her pinky toe is hurting, let me see what that is. <laughs> and you're going to look at WebMD. She just said, oh, let me see if that's whooping cough, or what is that? You know what I mean? It was before all of that. But we had parenting books like J-Lo's movie, What to Expect When You're Expecting, right? And I carried that book around as if it was the Bible. I was flipping through that, that page, I still have the book, it's just so tattered. Because as a first time mom, you wanna do the right things, you wanna make sure you cross the T's, dot the I's, and you wanna make sure that you're doing this mom thing like nobody has done it before. Because after all, you are the first mom that ever existed on this earth. Forget how you got here, you are the first mom, right? And it's so interesting because I, I talk about different subjects. Like yesterday was a subject, I was on TV One, Fox Soul, different places talking about different things that I know about, that I've experienced, but one of the most uh, bad A things that I've ever done was to become a mom. So people compliment me on all these things, oh great this, great that, but when people say, your children are so respectful, they're so, um, they're, their character, they, the way that they treat you, the way that they treat others, like that's the biggest compliment 
that anybody can give me. I would take that over any accolade. Yes? Yes. 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 <laughs> but the thing that parents do often, and moms do often, because I was gonna be that mom, I was gonna make sure I did everything, and then I said, you know what? It comes with time, right? So it's not about, I had, <laughs> My mom teases me and I think I created a problem because my daughter loves shoes. And when, before she was born when I was pregnant, I had like 30 pair of shoes for her. My mom was like, Kendall, she can't even walk. I'm like, that's not the point. But I also had a lot of books. I also read to her. I also taught her and talked to her, right? Because you want to make sure you don't know what to do. You can't copy another mother's journey, and that's one thing I want you guys to get. Just because you see her momming this way and her momming this way, it doesn't mean you have to copy. It's not a one size fits all thing. And whatever you decide as the parent to do, as the mom to do, then that's the right thing because who is going to purposely make a decision for their children that's gonna harm them, that's gonna hurt them, on the inside or out, right? So you have to first know that even though you're not the first mom, you're still right. What? Like what? I'm not the first mom. Because you know when you're pregnant, you're the first person pregnant too. You think, oh, I can't move, I can't walk. Like what? Civilization, you know, people, there was no drugs and all of that. But, um, and so um, when I think about that, um, I want you guys to clean that slate, get that off the table that you have to go now, y'all have social media and how people are parenting and how people are shaming. And if you're a parent that works, I heard someone on the panel, if you're a parent that works, where's the one that was in the military? I heard her, you, was that you? Oh, oh, Chris, oh, that was Krista. When you're in the military, if you're doing your job and you have to leave, are you not a good parent? Or if you decide to breastfeed or not, are you not a good parent? Or if you decide to work outside the home, are you not a good mom? We have to erase all of that. And we have to do the best that we can at, with the tools that we have, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about being a healthy woman. Is a difference between being a healthy woman and a healthy mom. Does anybody know the difference? There is no difference. Because if you're a healthy mom, a healthy woman, then you're gonna be a healthy mom. If you're an unhealed woman, then you're gonna be an unhealed mom. And when we're carrying children, they get what we give and what we have on the inside. So we have to not stress, not worry, not be concerned with certain things, and we have to be the healthy, God bless you, we have to be the healthy woman so we can be the healthy mom even before the child comes here, right? And then that goes because more is caught than taught. So you can tell your children you're okay. You can tell your children that you're fine. You can tell all of those, but they see you. And how are you going to show up, not just for your children, but for yourself? and you want to be healthy in that space. Yes? Oh, yes. 88% of mothers say that being a mom is the most important aspect of who they are as a person. Think about that. 88% of mothers say that being a mom is the most important aspect of who they are as a person. That makes me sad. That makes me extremely sad. So that means that you were worthless before you became a mom? Did anybody feel worthless before they came a mom, became a mom? No. So how, why is it that we take the identity of mom at, and cross out the woman? Because I'm gonna be talking about you are a woman first. Yes, you're a mom, but that shouldn't be your only definition. You shouldn't lead with that. You should lead with what you are. You're a woman. And with women, it's so interesting, with women, we can give grace often. We can understand more. We can empathize. We can sympathize. We can show compassion. But when it comes to being a mom, people don't get that. They start judging. Do you all notice that? 
And it's just so interesting. 62% of women feel they've lost a part of their identity since becoming a mother. By the show of hands, does anybody agree with that? Yeah. And it happens more often. The ones that didn't raise their hand, unfortunately, it may become a time where in a different space and time, you're going to raise your hand. Because a lot of times that's with women. And men do not lose themselves in being fathers. They're still a father, and they still can be a man and still do the things that they want to do and they were called to do, but women seem to put that aside and start focusing on mom. Now some may say, well, when you become a mom, you put yourself last and you focus on the children because that's what good moms do. That's not true because you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your children when you put your children above you. And we all have to learn that. Because like I said, we usually travel in threes. One is here now, my youngest daughter, um, we were together, we, we all still, well, I'll tell, I'll tell that later, but you have to understand that sometimes your children are not going to be with you, and then you're going to still be a woman. What are you going to do then? Are you going to know how to be a woman, or are you going to be so used to being a mom? Because it happens. Once you get empty nest syndrome, once they leave, or once they come back, or once they decide to do something different possibly than you want them to do, or move away, or do something, then you're gonna be sitting there like, what the heck do I do? I remember when I sent my kids to college, they're back now, but <laughs> I remember sending them to college. Uh, my, my oldest daughter teases me because I cried when she went. I tried to you know, move them in and do all of these things, and like, yeah, we're doing this. It's gonna be an awesome time. And then when I went home, and I was in the kitchen, and this one caught me. She was like, Mom, are you sitting here crying in the kitchen? I was like, oh my god, I walked past her room, and she's not there. Now she only went to college like 40 minutes up the road. That's not the point. That's not the point. She's not, I can't walk past her room. But that's what happens. I gave all my, my all to my, like I said, I started being a mom in my early 20s. I'm in my 50s now, and I'm just discovering, rediscovering who I am as a woman. I remember divorcing and my kids going uh, on the weekend to my exes, and I remember I was sitting in the house like, what the heck do I do with myself? I don't even know what to do. I'm sitting there walking around the mall by myself, and I'm going. I went. I actually went to one of my friends owns a hair salon. I went to her hair salon and sat there all day. I started. I was like, well, if you need me to wash somebody's hair, I, you know, I can do that. And I'm like, gosh, I'm like, what the heck do I do? I had no clue because I'm used to being a mom. Can anybody relate to that? Yes, It's so wow. So moms are known to prioritize their chil children over themselves, yes? Oh, yes. Yes? Oh, yes. Well, I'm going to tell y'all that's not healthy. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. On, on the logical <laughs> side of your brain, you understand that that's not healthy, right? Yeah. But we still do it. Let's go deeper. Love your children. Take care of your children. Uh, encourage them. Teach them. Correct them. Give your children the freedom to discover their voice. That's the greatest gift I've ever given my children, by the way is to discover their own voice, to be able to recognize it, to be able to make decisions if no one is around, if I'm not around. And I'm grateful they still come to me, and even now I get to coach my kids, because once they get older, you know, ultimately their lives, they can make their own decisions, but to be able to coach your, your kids and still hold value in that place, it's, it's really uh, an excellent thing. But when it comes to, how do I want to say this? When it comes to your children doing what you say because you're the mom, you're doing a disservice to your children and you don't want to repeat a cycle where they don't know how to be women. And that's what happens often when I see, especially when I coach moms and their children are gone or they don't have children, meaning still moms, but their children, I, I interned at a grief and loss. 
And my focus and what I had to do was coach and support moms who lost their children. And the ridicule that they would get when they said they had children but had no proof of children. Mm -hmm. That they were still moms mm -hmm. but had no proof. With people saying insensitive things like, well, at least you're still young, you can have another child. So just imagine being in a space and place where I have to coach, support moms who lost their children. And I don't wanna ask that question out loud, but how many of you, how do I wanna put this? How many of you have had more pregnancies than children? I'm gonna give you a hug after. And that's a painful thing. So when you're judging a mom and then they have maybe their angel child, that's the child that they have after a miscarriage or um, you have to be careful in how you judge another mom. Just like you don't know another woman's story, you don't know another mom's journey. And we have to be tender and sensitive to that. When your children, when you give your children freedom and a voice and the opinion, um, you give them the love, right? You give your children love? You give your children support? You give them guidance? You make sure that they take care of themselves? Why do moms stop doing it for themselves? Think about it, you're giving all of this away to your children. Because if you don't, then you'll have the mom guilt and you'll feel guilty. But then you see moms, when you see them, when you know them as a woman, you ever meet somebody, you know them as a woman, then they start having kids and you barely recognize them because they look totally different. And people always use excuse, well, you know, I'm a mom. But what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you forget who you are as a woman because you're a mom. Has anybody felt lost in motherhood? And you forget, you realize you didn't wash your hair in a couple of weeks, or did I, did I not brush my teeth today? Or um, when was the last time I went for a walk without a stroller? You know, you start to forget who you are. And I don't want moms to forget who they are as women. So I want everyone to say, I am a woman first. I am a woman first. I don't think y'all believe that. Y'all, that was a little weak. I am a woman first. I am a woman first. And don't have guilt with that. Don't allow anybody to shame you. You are a woman first. Right? No? Yes? Okay. Yes? Oh, yeah. And it's, 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 it's a thing where with moms, you want to say the right thing, you want to do the right thing. But we have to erase that as well. Sometimes you may mess up. Sometimes you may not get it right. Sometimes you have to apologize to your children. Sometimes you have to show them better than you can tell them because even if you think they're not looking at you, they're looking at you. I remember when my youngest daughter was little, she's 24 now, she's a teacher, and she still gives me this look, and I can see this look. She used to be on, in the car seat, and I would look through the rear view mirror, you know, you can see your kids in the car seat. Now they're on TikTok and they're in the car seat in the back, right? I said, boy, I told my kids, I said, y'all would be really viral right now. If there was TikTok and Instagram, I said, y'all would be famous, because I love those things anyway. And they sang and did all of these things. But my youngest daughter used to be in the car seat, and I would look through the rearview mirror, and she would just be looking at me with this glance. She would just be looking at me like, are you okay? And she would just be looking. And she still looks like that. So even if you think I'm putting on a good face, I'm okay, your kids know. So as they become older, you teach them about life. You teach them age-appropriate things so they can understand what womanhood is like, so they can understand, and you start to share your story and your journey with your children as they get older. Um, and I'm almost done, I guess. 
So ladies, uh, do you have a life outside of your children? Yes. How many have a life outside of their children? How many are trying to discover a life outside of their children? And that's okay. That's okay. As long as you, how many are not even trying to discover a life? They say, I can have a life as a mom, as a woman when I become 18. When they become 18. So everybody understands the importance of womanhood over motherhood. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Uh, it's, motherhood should not define you. Motherhood is a part of who you are, not the total sum. It's so interesting, the minute uh, you become a mom, womanhood is supposed to discontinue. No, you're just getting started. You're in another phase of womanhood. Do you know how strong women are to have children? I think about it, I have my children with no drugs. I'm a gangster. <laughs> Come on, no drugs. I was sitting on that bed with my oldest daughter like this. All right, what I gotta do? And then my other, my youngest daughter, her shoulders got stuck. And my doctor's in my face like, your baby's in danger, you need to push. I'm like, I'm pushing, coach, I'm pushing. Think about that, think about that. Give yourselves a pat on the back for just going through the birth process. You deserve that. If no one told you good job, I'm telling you right now, good job. If no one told you you were doing a great job with your kids, I'm telling you right now, great job. It's not easy, a man can't do it, they get a hangnail, they're like, oh, I can't go to work. And you want to be able to provide and give your children the healthy version of you. And you have to allow your children to see you make mistakes as they become older, to let you know that they're not perfect. For the longest time, my kids literally used to tell me, Mom, you're perfect, that's why. And I was like, when they started getting older, I was like, baby girl, listen here. <laughs> This is what happened, this is how I feel, and you have to do that. So when they become a woman and they become a man, and in that space and time of being a man and being a woman, they understand how to navigate and it doesn't look foreign to them, right? Take the, you know, take the, the mask off, figuratively and literally. Mom guilt is real whenever you put it on you or others pack the weight on you. You think you have to spend 100% of your time being a mom, yes? Oh, yes. Yes? Oh, yes. So if you spend 100% on being a mom and 100% on being a woman, then, I mean, 100% of being a mom, then what percentage are you gonna have in being a woman? Does that math, man? <laughs> if you're giving 100% of yourself to being a mom, what percentage are you giving of yourself of being a woman? You're missing out, it has to be a healthy balance. When you feel good, don't your children feel good? Yeah. When you are laughing and having a good time, don't your kids see that? Yeah. If you're not feeling your best self, can you provide and give your children what they need emotionally, physically, and financially? You can't do it. You can't do it to the best of your ability. All right, so as I close, you see some moms that don't care about how they look, how they smell, how they feel. Like, listen, if you're a mom and you got milk on your shirt all day, that's a problem. Well, I'm a mom, you know. No, because you're a mom with a washing machine. Or the sink is there, you know what I mean? You don't have to look a certain way because you're a mom. You don't have to walk around with spit up on you and smelling horrible on your hair. It's, it's smelling like yesterday or the day before or last week or when you walk in the Royal Farm, it smell like chicken, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't like going to there. <laughs> okay. Um, there, there are the same women who care to brush, comb their hair, brush their hair, comb, comb, like comb their hair, deodorant, etc. But now that you forgot your child is a teenager, anybody have teenagers? That's a whole different motherhood, motherdom, right? And at that time, you really got to let them, don't you know I'm a woman first? I was a woman before you, I was your mother. That's when you can start getting real, real with your kids, right? Listen, I remember I taught my children about money early on when my youngest daughter was like, mom, 
do you have any, we're going on a field trip, do you have any money? And I said, I don't have any cash. She was like, well, can you use that card or write a check? I, was, I pulled out my easel and I had a, a whole conversation on money. This is what happens. You have to have this and this. You can start having real conversations so they know what real life is about. Again, with children, more is caught than taught. You think they're not watching you, but they're watching you. Especially women that, how many of you have girls? You're the, us a lot. You're the first role model that your child has. And you don't want them on someone's couch later on because they don't know how to function as a girl, as a young woman, as an older woman, because you haven't taught them. They're seeing you. So you want to set the example. And if it's wrong or right, you decide. Not other people, not social media. But you want to remember that you are a woman first. Say it again. I am a woman first. I am a woman first. Many people are putting their lives on hold, their dreams on the back burner, the things that they want to do, the, the, the ideas that God, that God has downloaded into their lives because they think they're going to wait until they're 18. I'm telling you, it's time to do it now. You can still be a boss chick, a boss woman, a mother, a great mother, a woman. You can be all of those things. And the way that womanhood is set up, we can be all those things at one time. So I just want you to keep in mind that you are a woman first. You're doing the best you can with the tools you have. When you know better, you do better. Don't look at the next woman and decide I want to be this type of woman. Don't look at the next mom and say this is the type of mom I want to be. You stay in your zone, in your lane, and you be the best woman and mom that you can be for your children. And when your children see you giving your all in that way and still giving some of that to yourself, then they're gonna turn out to be the best human beings that they can be. And they're gonna owe that credit to the super moms in here. I just wanna tell every woman in here that you rock. I wanna tell every woman in here that you put yourself first today. Cause I don't see many kids in here, right? So you decided that you needed this for you as a mom and as a woman. And I just wanna say, I salute you. God bless you guys. Peace.